On this week's show, we chat about a wonderful charity called the Kevin Bell Repatriation Trust. The trust helps Irish families cover the cost of bringing a loved one's remains back home to Ireland. It was set up by the family of Kevin Bell, a 26-year-old County Down man who was tragically killed in a hit-and-run accident in the Bronx in 2013. Irish people at home and abroad have developed a deep affinity with the trust, which has repatriated nearly 1,100 remains to date. I speak to Colin Bell, who is Kevin's father and a trustee of the charity. He discusses the history of the trust, how it came about, and how it has helped comfort so many grieving families. It is a fitting tribute and a lovely legacy to honour the life of Kevin Bell. I also chat to Cassie Wilkins, who is organising a fundraiser for the Trust this Saturday, May 22nd, in Sherwood's Restaurant in Larchmont, Westchester County. Cassie is organising the event with her friends Liz Prendergast, Jazz Neary and Anna McNeilish. They are all Irish immigrants living in Woodlawn and Cassie tells me why they decided to put the event together and to raise money for the Kevin Bell Trust. Links to purchase the last remaining tickets are in the description of this episode on our website, thelonghaulpodcast.com, as well as the Ivory Party's Instagram page. Donations to the Kevin Bell Repatriation Fund can be made via the charity's website, kevinbellrepatriationtrust.com, and its Facebook page. You can follow The Long Haul Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Long Haul Podcast. I started off the show by asking Colin about what type of a character his son, Kevin, was. He was a... Uh... Full of crack. He, uh, he was a young fellow who loved life. He had, he had two goals at university uh, and he dropped out of both because they wanted him to pass exams. He loved travel. He had been in Australia for a year. And then when he eventually got to New York, uh, he thought he had landed in heaven. He was just loving life and uh, he was involved with the Armagh Gaelic Club. Uh, he was a Kevin. was a, a an Irish dancer as well. He, he had won uh, the Scorn and Oak uh, for for Kelly dance. Was it Kelly dancing or set dancing? Yeah. For set dancing, and uh, was uh, always in good form. Always busy. Always doing things, and, and unfortunately, uh, on. A uh, Sunday morning when returning, he, he lived in Woodlawn and returning to his apartment uh, on a Sunday morning about four to three, got out of a taxi in a speeding white van, uh, kind of lost control, hit him and knocked him onto the road and he was hit by another uh, vehicle and the both vehicles uh, drove on and unfortunately Kevin was killed instantly. And did that happen up in, up in Woodlawn, uh, Colin, did it? It did, indeed, yes. And yeah. um, no, no one has been held accountable in, in the years since. Yeah. Has there been any developments? No, we, that, that's the last we heard. To be honest, nobody. And to be honest, I'm not. It's not something that's going to. Yeah. You know, keep us away or annoy us or whatever. It would. We just let it get into us. It's, it, just it was Kevin's time, I believe, and and. Uh, unfortunately as you say but uh, out of whenever that happened uh, I'm from Newry County Down and our family would have been very very well known my father and mother were both teachers my father and the Christian brothers and uh, as well as that uh, my wife's uh, mother and father were very well known as well and Ethna would have been well known through drama and musicals and I played a bit of football with Down, and I also played soccer with Newry Town for seven years. And I also was a teacher in the Christian Brothers. So whenever, <coughs> uh, and also, I suppose, another claim to fame was that we had uh, seven children under the age of six, with two sets of twins, Whoa. 13 months apart, and then three singles. And uh, So we were kind of well known about the time. So whenever... Uh, this happened that Yuri went into a frenzy of fundraising to get Kevin home. Uh, there was a, as I said, he was killed on a Sunday morning. And on the Tuesday night, there was a fun quiz or a 
table quiz in the Canal Court Hotel, which raised £42,000. Uh, Jesus. Thursday night. Yeah, on Thursday Great. night. Yeah, there was a fun run and walk, and, and on the Thursday night it raised twenty thousand pounds. There were the bag packs, photo sessions, any, and of course there was a fundraiser in, in New York, and the, also a fundraiser in Australia, and uh, in, all in all there was one hundred fifty thousand pounds raised to bring Kevin home and obviously we didn't need this need that to get him home and about a week after Kevin's death we heard of a young boy from Kerry Duff had been killed in Thailand so we contacted his parents and said that we had the money to bring him home the following week there was a, a, a woman from Bangor in Northern Ireland was was uh, murdered by her husband in, in, in Sydney uh, so we reached out and we brought her home following week there was a young lad from Sligo fell and died in Las Vegas so and again we reached out and we just thought that once this money is gone you know that would be the end of it but it ended up that we have now taken uh, almost 1,100 people home from all parts of the world and we're going very very strong we're, we're registered charity in Northern Ireland and we're also registered with the charity regulator down south. But people are so good uh, and fundraising is going on in all parts of the world as, as Cassie knows. And it's uh, it's just it was, as we say, it's Kevin's legacy. Yeah. And would, yeah. would, had Kevin been in New York for a long period of time before, before that incident, uh, uh, Colin? How long was no, he in New months. York? Ten just months. Ten months. I was he he was living in Woodlawn. Was he working? Was he working? He was. He, he was working with, in construction, though he had never lifted a lifted a, a shovel in his life. But he he was he was kind of a uh, a site. He would look after the safety on site and stuff like that. There, it wouldn't have been too hard on him now physically. <laughs> but he loved the finger it. pointer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it, you said he fell in love with the place. He, he, he oh really. My God, absolutely. Oh, he could have done tour guide. For, for <laughs> the people near out nearly every weekend, you know, friends out and showing New York off and taking them here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Not he just loved New York. Yeah, God was. There's the first place he found was big enough for him. You know. <laughs> So w- w- when he died, uh, Colin, you were t- talk- talking about the fundraising there. I, I believe Aidan O'Rourke was one of the first people to get involved. There's an ex-teacher in the Abbey Grammar School in Derry. He was the one that did the, the, the quiz on the Thursday okay. on Tuesday night. And it was just the whole community spurred into action. I was I saw some footage online that the, the turnout for the, uh, for uh, Kevin's funeral just shows you how, how well-loved he was. Um, was, how well liked he was. Oh, he was like you know, you say he was a he was a character. You know, he he he, he loved fancy dress. He loved uh, he loved his paint, like you know, and <laughs> just loved the crack, as you say. And he uh, he wouldn't have taken him too much for him to get up and do a bit of dancing, you know. Yeah, he was a good dancer, right here. Oh, he was surely. Yeah, yeah, he was. As I said he's he's all Ireland medals for for dancing, you know. So okay. And, and his twin, his, Kevin was a twin, and they both they, they actually represented Kilevi. Uh, that's you know uh, Stevie from Kilevi. You know who I'm talking about, uh, the Great Armagh footballer. He uh, that's the same club that he represented them. And, okay. Uh, you know. And did he? He was he involved with the Armagh team out here in New York? Was he? He was. He was involved. Yeah. Though we're actually down people, you know, to, to keep the record straight. <laughs> but, uh, he was in, well, that was the club he was with, yeah. yeah. He would have been a good water boy now, he wouldn't have been. <laughs> he, 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 like he, myself. <laughs> yeah. He'd, he'd be better delivering water than, than trying to mark somebody. <laughs> So, so, so just just to talk me through, uh, Colin. So, um, w- when he died, um, 
obviously people, where do you turn to? And um... The amazing thing is, and it really is hard to believe, but uh, Kevin was killed on a Sunday morning, you know, early in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. And we had Kevin home in our house on Wednesday. Would you believe? And I believe that. For all, yeah, for all the repatriations that we've ever done, there was none ever as quick. Any done as quick. See, Ethna's uh, cousin, Nasta Nigonel, uh, she, lives, or she lives in Manhattan and she knows a lot of the top people. So herself, uh, the Arma uh, Club, the boys of the Arma Club drove her about his uh, post mortem or autopsy took place on Sunday afternoon. And on the Monday morning, the Arma boys picked her up. And they went to wherever they had to go to get the paperwork done. And if they said to her, uh, come back at half past three, she, she would say, no, I, I uh, give me, tell me who I have to see. And um, amazingly, now Kevin was was on the plane on Tuesday night and home Wednesday morning. So, on Cassie? I just said it's unbelievable awesome. to hear, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, as I say, like, we have taken quite a few from New York and New York is one of the quicker places you know uh, to get people home with me you, you generally now you, you would have somebody home maybe five six seven days and that's brilliant whereas I had uh, this week there was one from Bermuda that took us maybe two and a half weeks and there's one from from New Orleans that that took uh, over three weeks, you know, which, well, I suppose, I don't know, COVID times, I suppose, but New York is, is, is generally uh, uh, very quick at getting people. The amount of um, people that you've uh, brought back home in, in nearly eight years is just absolutely, when Cassie sent me the figures there the other day, Colin, that she had nearly 1,100 people that she repatriated. It is, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's so comforting to all those, fa- it's not just people you're bringing home, it's the families you're comforting. It's yeah. it, well, the, thing, the big thing is too, and you, you maybe alluded, it, alluded to it, is what do you do when something like that, that happens? Where do you go to? Uh, yeah. Who do you talk to? And generally what happens is that uh, the family will get in touch with us. You know, uh, somebody will have heard of us and they'll get in touch with us. And once they get in touch with us, they don't have to do anything else. You know, okay. we, we'll make all the arrangements. We take it out of their hands and I suppose it's one less worry for them. You know? When someone does die, I remember myself go, going away on holidays over through the years. My mother would always tell me, make sure you have your travel insurance in case something happens. Yeah, we'd never be able to bring you be able to bring you home and as a young fella or I, I'm sure most people wouldn't would, wouldn't think twice they were sure, sure that wouldn't happen oh, no, it's not, I yeah. didn't get told that they didn't give me that warning at all they're like go on get on the plane yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is well, I mean lots of people like to, you know you go there you know it's kind of a rite of passage now for young people to go to say Australia and of course when they go to Australia they find that they love it so they'll stay a second year and maybe they, they have it insurance initially but then of course uh, as you say sure nothing's going to happen to them and yeah. so they wouldn't bother taking out insurance again but uh, as I say uh, we we uh, have the resources and we get so much support that, uh, that that's I suppose that that's what we're here for you know is, is to the, the, it says, I mean, our mission statement is to alleviate, excuse me, uh, the, the financial uh, pressure. Of, 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 you know, and, 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 and would uh, someone's travel insurance cover that, Colin? Or oh, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it would, yeah, yeah. It would. If, if the person has insurance, then we're not needed. Okay. Really? Really? That's good. Yeah. And, and tell me, Colin, what it, what's the cost? How, how much would it be? To, obviously, the country would would matter a whole lot, and I think um, the UK is one of your main places where you bring people home. But how, what's like? What's the kind of figure? How much does it cost to, to to bring someone home? Like, just say for New York, where we are, for example. New York, it's generally, I suppose, can be from eight to, to sixteen thousand dollars. 
but uh, in Australia it would be uh, generally in twelve thousand to fourteen thousand Australian dollars, which is a lot cheaper, to be honest. Mm. But then you have the likes of, I mean, in, in Thailand, we the, we we are taking a, a somebody home from Thailand this week, and uh, it generally costs in the region of maybe six thousand sterling. But we had to uh, pay five thousand uh, hospital bills before they would even release the body. So, okay. you know, uh, there's, there's that as well. So, I mean, uh, it can be quite expensive. But, I mean, last week we took, unfortunately, we took eight people home. Eight, eight people. And, yeah, and right. a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, we we took eight young people, all all young home from Perth in Australia, who all died, uh, you know, uh, they weren't together. There were two young lads were killed whenever a slab fell, fell on while they were having their break. There was a young fellow from Belfast took his own life. There was a girl from Delvin in, in County Meath who went uh, who uh, went into organ failure. There was a young fellow from Drogheda in County Louth who, who fell off scaffolding. There was a boy from Lurgan who was killed in a car crash. And in the space of a fortnight, we took eight young people home from, from Perth in Australia. You know? That, that is... That's... That's unbelievable, and it's yeah. uh, it's a it's a credit to you, and it's a credit to to Kevin's name and his legacy that you're able to that some good has come out of such a tragic, tragic event. Yeah, as I say, it does give us comfort, you know. As I say, he was a big character. And we do miss him so much, but as I say, uh, we the fact that 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 this has come out of it, like I mean, we didn't start out to 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 do this, but. Uh, we're so happy now that we're able to do it, you know. And is it always nearly like tragic cases, Colin, or could it be someone maybe who is elderly that dies? It's it's not always the the the, the tragic case, no. is it that? Well, it, it generally it mostly is. Okay. I mean, the only thing we wouldn't, you know, say, say somebody was ninety and who had lived in New York for seventy years. And their dying wish was to be buried in Ireland. Well, that's a no-no, you know. Okay. If, you know, if they if they wanted to be buried in Ireland over seventy years, they could have made provision for that, gotcha. you know. Yeah. But uh, so we don't do dying wishes. <clears throat> but it's very very rare that we refuse anybody. But I mean, it, it generally it's it's young people, and or or else you know uh, people who have no family out in in. in Say New York or, or Sydney or whatever you know who who uh, who we bring home. Yeah, Colin, it's not just the the actual cost of bringing someone home; it's the logistics. I would imagine of uh, knowing where to go, who to contact. That their kind of networks. I'd imagine that you would have built up over the years in different yeah, countries. It's yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if somebody dies in New York, one phone call. Or San Francisco, or Boston, or or you know uh, <clears throat> Perth, or, or Melbourne, or Thailand, or anywhere in Spain, or that you know it's generally. You know, I mean, we're at a stage now where it used to be where where when we were doing it, we used to have to uh, have the money up front, you know, for okay. these undertakers. And that. But now, I mean, we're that well known to be honest. I've used these. I mean, if, if the if the undertakers do a good job, we will of course use them again, and then we, you know, there's no big pressure then having the money up front. You know, yeah. I I was um, I heard Clive Anderson is uh, would be a, has helped a lot a lot in New York City, has he? Clive is excellent, yeah, and sure. Hodder and Ferenga yeah, as well up at Woodlawn. I mean, they they really are fantastic, and I mean they're they're so sensitive to the to people's wishes and. New York actually, if you wanted, sorry, if you want to die in New York's the place to die because you know you'll have a bit of a wake and, and you'll get a bit of respect. You're just not sent home. You know, it's uh, 
uh, it's it's uh, acclaimed as a great job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just got a I just got a message before I uh, came on with GM off uh, Dermot York, as you might know. Uh, out oh, here, David, yeah. Yeah. And he Longford, him, man. Longford man. Yeah, he was just telling me a couple of instances. He said that a couple of years ago there was, of course, there was a couple of tragedies with uh, Longford people here. But uh, uh, one person was on a building site, um, died tragically in the building site, and just uh, Dermot said, just um, knowing that they could uh, look after the body and send the home, he rang the parents and just so that it was coming from him and that he knew everything was taken care of. He said, just the comfort of that. Um, was just was just unbelievable. He said, "Yeah, well, I've been, we actually we've been I, we've been out uh, two or three times to maybe more three or four times mm. to to New York for fundraisers. And, uh, the, the New York Irish are just unbelievable. They're fantastic. If someone did tragically pass away, Connor, how do they get in contact? Or what do do people usually ring an embassy first, and would the embassy then forward them to to your? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I mean. I, the likes of if something happened, like you know, Dermot would know of us, or or uh, anybody up at Woodlawn would know of us, and, and they would probably contact us initially. But generally, uh, the people will contact you know, obviously, what what do we do? And maybe they've never heard of the Kevin Bell uh, Repatriation Trust, so they'll contact the Department of Foreign Affairs in Dublin. And then the Department of Foreign Affairs will, will give them my number and, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, okay. So, and there, there's been, as you say, there's been a, a lot of fundraising down through the years um, that the Kevin Bell Trust has brought in on itself and of other, pe- of other people. And uh, I suppose Cassie is a, is a great example of that. Cassie is, is uh, organizing a fundraiser Saturday. It's called the Ivory Party, and she's here with us to talk about that. So, Cassie, thanks for thanks for coming on. I, I know you were on already, but uh, just no <laughs> but uh, just explain to us um, who's organising your um, event Saturday. I, I know it's not exactly it's everything is for the Kevin Bell Trust, but you went away and organised this on on your own to support the Kevin Bell Trust. Yeah, um, we basically came up with the idea when we were having dinner together, kind of in the middle of the pandemic. Um, dreaming of sunnier times and planning of when we could actually do things when the restrictions lifted and thankfully we're kind of edging closer and closer Um, as you know New York's a lot more open than Ireland at the moment Um, but we were out for it we were having dinner and the girls were talking about stuff like the Hamptons White Party and we were like imagine if we could create something like that Um, but a lot more relatable to our friend group (laughs) We're not like half as posh as that, so um, it would be amazing. So we came up with the ivory party, and we were like, "Will we do it? Or like, why not? You know what I mean? There's nothing stopping us." And we were uh, like ushering summer in. We were like hotter weather, people out to bars again, socializing shoulder to shoulder when we can, and um, and I think that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do something nice where people could ease back in at their own pace. And then me and Liz were walking home that night and I said, you know, what if we could raise some money while we were doing it? And she was like, absolutely. So then it was settled. And then from there on, we were racking our brains for organizations and we wanted to do something around the Irish community. And we said, you know, is there anything there for immigration at the start? There's, there's really not, apart from the Irish and the Ashling Irish Centre and the Emerald Isles who do great work. And we had always known about the Kevin Bell Trust, but not really educated properly on it. So then we, I reached out to my friend who does work for Pieta House. She organises the Darkness into Light, which is coming up. <laughs> um, and she sent us a paragraph on how she had worked with the Kevin Bell Trust. And she said they're amazing. The work they do is life changing. And I sent that on to the girls and immediately we were like, this is it. We like got shivers. And every time we do talk about it, we get emotional because every time we learn something more, someone they've helped or now seeing all the international countries that they've helped, we're just blown away. It's God's work and you're, you just can't believe that that is there. And I suppose when you do lose someone, you're so heartbroken, you're like your world has been turned upside down. And the last thing you're thinking about is 
the financial strain of getting your loved one home to you. And then I just think that the trust, you know, putting a hand on your shoulder, being like, it's okay, we can help. I, I just think it's the loveliest idea. It's, so. fa- it's fantastic what you're doing. So how many of you, I think there was four of you involved, Cassie, that, 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 yeah. that put it together? There is myself, um, Jazz Neary from Roscommon, Liz Prendergast <laughs> from Galway, and Anna McNeil is from Tyrone. Woodlawn based Irish girls. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, where is it on? When is it on? And uh, can we still get tickets? This is it. Um, it's on in Larchmont in New York. Um, it's not too far in an Uber up from Woodlawn. There's a bus going from the Wild Goose in Queens as well for anyone who wants to travel from Queens. It's at 8 p.m. on Saturday. Um, and there we did sell out the other night, which was amazing. We set the limit oh. um, because of COVID. I know it was amazing. And we got two texts simultaneously saying the website's down. And we're like, oh God. So we went on and it was just that people had bought so much tickets. Um, so then we spoke to the owner of the venue or after extending that, they think there's 20 more tickets. So if people were looking to buy in the next few days, it's the time because they are going fast. So that's good. Okay. And uh, that's that's excellent. It, it was un- unbelievable. We got our tickets last week, and um, we're really looking forward to it. So, what, what's the event? What, what's what is the event? Is, is it a dinner, or tell, tell us more about it? Um, it's not. It's a lot more casual than that because it started as a party. Um, it's eight till close. Um, you show up. It's in your white slash cream slash ivory tones, whatever you want to wear. Um, you walk in, there'll be a nice um, balloon arch, there's like a nice place to take pictures, you'll get Prosecco on arrival, um, maybe some candy, and then you walk in and they're, we're trying to get some games going. Um, it's just supposed to be like a nice relaxed atmosphere to kick off the summer. Um, yeah, and I just want to say as well, um, for the balloon arch, Orla Quinn, reached out to us um, to offer us that like totally unannounced we weren't expecting it and um, she just started up her own event planning um, agency in in Woodlawn and she just came forward and gave us that free of charge she offered to decorate we couldn't have asked for more so yeah fantastic they don't yeah so where where can we get the, the remaining tickets the easiest way to do it is follow the Instagram page uh, the ivory party and you, the link is in the bio. And if any of people on Instagram are friends with myself, Jazz, Liz, or Anna, it's in our own bios. And um, you just okay. click it. There's four different tabs. The last one is tickets. And um, if you can't make it, there is an option to donate. And like, there's no set limit. You can do- donate as little as you want or whatever you want. We're so grateful for anything. People have been unbelievably generous, and we're just blown away by it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So we, you can, if you can't make it, you can still donate to your event uh, Saturday. You can, yeah. And um, like we're very, very happy with ticket sales, but the donations, we're more concerned about just like the money going towards the trust. Because as you heard, like it's not cheap to do, and we just yeah. we appreciate everything. Yeah. So and you can donate there. The option is there without buying a ticket. You were telling me that you hadn't uh, met Colin before, and you reached out to him. And just tell me how, uh, like, how 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 you both came together, and uh, the feedback and the help you got from uh, Colin and uh, the rest of the team there at the trust. So Liz, she was the first to reach out, and we were kind of nervous because we didn't know, you know, to what extent it was still running. Maybe that we do, we should have just reached out and been more vocal to them from the start. But he was so responsive from. The gecko, um, he was straight back with figures. He was like, absolutely, as you can see, he's just that type of person. He's he's on it. Um, and then um, he sent me the fact sheet that I sent you, yeah. where it just breaks down exactly where the money's going, how many lives they've changed, the families they've changed. It was yeah, I'll go from the gecko. Perfect, Colin. How how does how do people donate if they're going to donate to to the trust itself, or if, or if they were looking to do you know some type of similar event that Cassie is doing? How do they help out with the trust? Well, I mean, if you go to our website, there's a, you know PayPal or Just Giving or Virgin or whatever. There's different platforms that, that they can donate. I just like to say thank you to Cassie and her friends, and it's great to hear that you're up and 
out again. We are sitting here and could go nowhere. <laughs> we'll be making this annual if we get away with it. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll be at the next one. Yeah, we, we, they, they'll have you over next That's year. A promise. I take that as a promise. No going back. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, Jim. I might just end up there Saturday night myself. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Tell me about just there's been um, there's been other types of fundraising over the last couple of years. Is can you give us some examples? I know like at Cork Airport, a couple of the airports were um, were, mm-hmm. were were sending yeah, money yeah. to the trust. Oh, it, it, it's it's there's actually it, a fellow now doing the long way home. Have you seen that? Where he's rowing from a. Uh, uh, from New York to uh, the Garvin, himself and three other boys. I think this is a brilliant one. The, uh, a friend of Kevin's, he was at school with Kevin, and he decided that he would cycle from uh, the West Coast to the East Coast, and he had never cycled 10 miles in his life before. <laughs> I said, I mean, you know, I don't think he, he, he could even fix a puncture, but he did it. He cycled, he cycled from San Francisco to yeah. New York, yeah. You know, but people are, are, are so so good. I mean, I mean, you were mentioning Dermot York. We had a, they, they they had a great night for us out there. There's there's so many people out there that have been so so good to us. And York is, is fantastic, and Woodlawn in particular is fantastic. And what do you call it? I always remember going to Woodlawn. I never remember leaving it. <laughs> 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 Nothing has changed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a great spot, a great Irish enclave up there. But what what I think is fast is brilliant about what Cassie's doing is that they don't have a direct relationship with the trust, like there, yeah. and they came up. So it just shows you the kind of the reputation year after garnering the last couple of years, and you know the work you do has really, really struck a chord with people. Well, as I say, it, 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 it's Kevin's legacy, and and it gives us comfort. Know that you know that he just didn't die for nothing. You know that that something good has come out, and it just shows throughout the world the, the, the goodness of people. I mean, as you say, I mean, Cassie did no direct uh, uh, link with the trust, but uh, the the thought of us. And we really just really can't thank people enough for for the support that we do get. I wish new more people would know about you, and I think. From this, we're just going to keep on spreading that because they just like it's an amazing thing you're doing. And and I know it wasn't your intention to set it up, but the fact that you kept going yeah. after the hundred and fifty thousand had run out is is a credit to you. Like it says enough, you know. Well, to be honest, now if I could have got away with keeping that one hundred and fifty and doing it, I would. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was it took on a life of its own, Cassie. You know, and, uh, we're delighted. Are, are all the family involved in the the, the trust, Colin? I know they, he's. Yeah, well, well, I was some Eamon, he's in Sydney. Uh, uh, son Connor, who who was he? He was out on a, 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 a what do you call it? Uh, internship <laughs> with Teneco in New York. He lived in Queens. And his visa was up, so they've sent him to, to Toronto now. Okay. And he's in Toronto just busting to get back to New York, you know. Yeah. But uh, the rest of Aetna uh, looks after all merchandise and stuff. They do with the jerseys and uh, stuff like that there. And she looks after and Kira looks after Twitter and Facebook. And, you know, and Brenton's uh, or Kevin's uh, uh, twin brother, you know, they're oh, we're, they're, it's really family one. We're, there's nobody gets paid. You know, it's it's the lucky thing about it is that uh, I mean, it's it is a labour of love. And, and, and it's, uh, poor Kevin and, and say nobody gets a penny for doing it. So anybody who gives a dollar, you could be sure that one hundred cents of that dollar goes to what it's supposed to go to. Fantastic. Thanks very much, guys. I think that's nearly everything covered there. If there's anything else you want to add? The ticket includes um, your drink, your food, and your donation as well. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Um, there is 25 of the ticket going straight to the, the fund, um, as well as covering the bar and the food. So, um, And there is still tickets available.
Okay. So it's the Ivory Party on Instagram. Um, I just did want to say a special mention to the Wild Goose who organised a bus um, as well. Wasn't prompted. They just did it off their own back. JT Megan and Archstone who've given us um, really good uh, donations as well. So we couldn't be more um, thankful for those. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> Brilliant. And uh, I'll, I'll put the links up on the, the, this uh uh, on this podcast and up on our website as well i'll do a little i'll do a little story on on our, on our website the dot uh, com. so uh you'll give us a cassie no doubt you'll give us a, an update next week and just uh i'll be yes. there anyway uh, and we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll we down for will, there, will there be a best dressed uh best dressed uh, competition as well <laughs> i mean i think there should be i have heard of people with some unconventional outfits on the night so Okay. We'll see. We'll see. So, <laughs> all in good spirits and for a fantastic uh, organization. So fair play to you. And uh, thanks, Colin. Thanks for coming on as well. I pre- really appreciate it. And we'll, we, we, we'll, see, we'll see you this time 12 months for the Ivory Party part, uh, part two. Exactly. I'm Get your outfit ready. ready. <laughs> Perfect. Um, the bar is Sherwoods in Larchmont. And the owner, Joe, um, has been very accommodating. So we're looking forward to it now. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael and Cassie. Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you, Colin. Nice to talk to you. Keep up Every the good day. work. And that's all for this week. Let us know what you think by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Long Haul Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review of the podcast. This will ensure that we can get more episodes to you more often. Links to the last remaining tickets for the Ivory Party are in the description of this podcast as well as the Ivory Party's Instagram page. Donations to the Kevin Bell Repatriation Fund can be made via the charity's website kevinbellrepatriationtrust.com and its Facebook page. You can check out all of our previous podcasts on thelonghaulpodcast.com. We are currently expanding the site to cover more Irish-American news stories, so if you'd like to suggest a story or submit one yourself, please email me on michaeljdorgan at hotmail.com. And thanks for listening. Girls, can you dance the polka? And when we got inside the house, the drinks were passed around. The liquor was so awful strong, my head went round.